Hello there, minions. It's a Wheezy again. Today, I want to talk to you about the Battlefield 2042 beta and specifically the new plus system for weapons, whether or not it's a gimmick or the future of weapon customization in games. Let's go talk about it. Okay, minions, so I'm going to be rolling in some clips that are pertinent to this as we talk about it so you can see some Battlefield 2042 gameplay with the plus system in action. But first, let's address what is the plus system in Battlefield 2042. And what it is, is a plus. <laughs> it's, a radio, it's a menu that comes up, a well, radial menu, it's a plus menu that comes up when you hold down on controllers, when you hold down left one um, or right or left bumper on the Xbox. Uh, I believe it's T on the PC, it pops up this little plus menu where you can select from a bunch of different attachments uh, for your weapon. So at any point during the game, you can dynamically, instantly switch out uh, all of your attachments on your gun, including ammo types. So um, it's a really kind of neat system, but then the question is, is this a novelty, is this a gimmick, or is this something really valuable? Now, um, one thing that might be helpful to note, because <laughs> it took me... Uh, an embarrassingly long time to figure it out. On consoles, you gotta use the face buttons to toggle through the options in the plus menu. Um, it seemed intuitively, because it's a plus, like it would be on the D-pad when you hold L1. That didn't work, and I couldn't use the sticks or anything to like navigate it. Um, on PC, when you open up that system, your mouse just gets to navigate and you can t t select what you want. Um, but on consoles, you have to use, on, uh, on the PlayStation, uh, triangle, circle, square, and cross, or uh, A, B, X, Y on the Xbox controller. So it took me an embarrassingly long time to figure that out. <laughs> um, but now that I know how to use it, it's actually, I really love it. So you can swap out optics on the fly, you can swap out magazine types, which means you can get higher damage magazine, like you can do ammo swaps, you can do anti-personnel, uh, or not, uh, anti-material, armor-piercing, the AP, armor-piercing, anti-material weapons, so they make you more effective against light, light vehicles and equipment. You can swap out barrels for increased range, reduced recoil, you can swap out grips, you can add a flashlight, like, basically the stuff you could do before in the customized menu, you can now do on the fly during the game, which I think is really neat, like, it allows you to anticipate your next engagement and swap out your attachments to to prepare for that in a way that you can't unless in previous games like you die and then you're like okay well now I want to switch to a sniper role or now I want to go long distance or now I want to engage you know get close range this allows you some flexibility um, while still maintaining the weapon roles so you can adapt weapons to a situation, but the weapons still fill their roles. You can't, for instance, turn a sniper rifle into a close quarters weapon that's super effective like an SMG, right? You can put on a long range scope and snipe someone far away, and then if you're worried you're gonna engage someone up close while you're moving around, you can either do a lower magnification optic or switch to no optic to give yourself a better chance of engaging someone at close range if you need to, or, if you're engaging with maybe another sniper or someone else at long distance and you don't want the scope glint, someone starts shooting back at you because of your scope glint, you can take your scope off, relocate, and try and re-engage them, maybe with iron sights. I'm not sure in the full game if there will be lower magnification optics that don't have a scope glint. As far as I can tell, both the ACOG and the full power scope for the sniper rifles both cause a glint. And the ACOG, I believe, causes scope glint on all weapons, so the assault rifles, whatever you put it on. I believe it causes a scope glint on that. So it still makes the weapons fit their role, but you can't really, uh, so you can't really have a jack of all trades. And it's not like Modern Warfare 2's one man army. You can't just swap out your entire weapon in a single life. You can't like pull out an SMG to clear a building and then swap over to a sniper rifle to shoot someone long range. It doesn't work that way. So it doesn't really break the role of the game. Um, and it pro provides extra versatility uh, at the expense of realism. But, I mean, let's be honest, you're playing Battlefield, it's kind of a sandbox. It's not a realism game. So, it's the same thing with Call of Duty. These games aren't really in the realm of realism. And there are those games, there is a, an, an audience for those games. 
I, um, I don't know when I'll post it, but I played some Hell Let Loose, and I've got a video that I'm going to post of that, I don't know when. Um, but there's definitely an audience for those mill sims. I'm interested in trying out, like, Insurgency Stan Sandstorm, which is a modern kind of realism-based uh, one. There were some kind of... Well, I only played them single player. They had limited multiplayer modes, but they weren't really that popular. Back in the last, well, two generations ago of consoles, I guess, like the Xbox 360, um, there were Operation Flashpoint um, and Operation Flashpoint, I think, Dragon Rising. And they were kind of mostly single player, but simulation experiences where one well-aimed shot at long range would drop someone. Um, I'm top sweeping. So in that context, um, realism is probably a bit more important. Battlefield, that's just really not the case, so I think this adds more than it takes away as far as making the game more fun and exciting. Um, so let's kind of break down the core of, I've kind of talked about what I like, but I'll break down what I like versus what I don't like. Um, and spoiler alert, there's a lot I like, there's, there's basically nothing I don't like. Um, there's very little. So what I do like is it does add an extra layer of tactics to the game. Like, you guys been around a while, you know, I love tactics, I love strategy and shooters, I like applying your brain power to the game as opposed to just trying to do twitch shooting all the time, right? Like, that's kind of my style, I like I like the tactics. So being able to anticipate your next encounter, you want to switch your attachments because you're, someone's maybe pushing up on you, um, you got a longer range setup, but then someone's getting close, so you want to swap out your optics, so take off the ACOG, put on a dot sight, you know, maybe even swap out your ammo types or your barrels so that you can be more effective at close range for that engagement, and then you see someone at distance and you want to put an, uh, an ACOG back on and engage at a longer range. It gives that flexibility and it makes you adaptive and it's, it's really great. I love being able to think on the fly and dynamically make those changes. Um, another thing that I really like about it is it allows you to use setups you probably wouldn't otherwise ever use. If you guys remember way back in the day, like co early days of COD 4, um, one of my favorite kind of messing around setups was like the ACOG Scorpion. So you take this Scorpion submachine gun, put a big ACOG scope on it, and try and go around and get kills. That's for fun, it's kind of ridiculous. Going to a more realistic example, in Battlefield games, I would almost never Liter literally never put an ACOG on an assault rifle because it increases your visual recoil, it's, it makes you less effective at close range, it kind of takes what the assault rifle is best at, which is mid-range engagements, and it, and it kind of eliminates a lot of its versatility, which is why assault rifles are so popular, right? In the same way that if you have an SMG, you wouldn't set it up for a longer range encounter, right? Because the chances of you utilizing that are so slim that you wouldn't build the weapon to do that just in case that one instance comes up because you're more likely to encounter the other seven instances where it being a close range weapon matters. The plus system allows you to shift that on the fly so you can take an assault rifle, uh, which I would always run with a low, low magnification dot, right, or iron sights if I have to make a trade-off on which attachments I'm choosing. And I can, if someone's out at range and I've got an assault rifle, like I can't just pick up a sniper rifle or a marksman rifle, right? I can throw on an ACOG, switch to a longer barrel, put it on single fire mode, and I can engage at longer distances. I absolutely love that. And then if I get that kill, or if I draw attention and someone pushes up on me, slap the dot back on, go back to full auto, close range barrel, and then use it like it's intended. Like, I absolutely love that. As you may notice, this is the first video I'm creating other than my initial, like, two games of Battlefield 2042, because I feel like this feature is probably my favorite thing about the game so far. Other than, yes, the game's beautiful, it plays well, great audio balance. It's a beta, there's still some bugs, um, but overall the game feels really great, and this plus system is the biggest addition that I absolutely uh, love, uh, and I've been really enjoying using. Um, Another example of, of setups you wouldn't otherwise use when you're using a sniper, right? Unless you're kind of screwing around or doing a challenge or something like that, you probably wouldn't run a sniper without an optic, with like an iron sight, unless you're trying to do some sort of fancy quick scoping, something, something. Well, with the plus system, you can use your sniper in its dedicated role as a long range rifle, but if you're moving from location to location or someone's pressing up on you, 
swapping to that iron sight and giving yourself an opportunity to do that. I guess I mentioned this a little bit before with, with removing scope glint. I, it just, it really is an awesome addition to the game that makes it feel more tactical, even though it doesn't feel very realistic. Although, in reality, <laughs> you could fuck around with shit and take off optics or swatch them, swap, swap them. That's why you have hybrid optics, is because in real life you wouldn't do that. So you would just have like a scope on top and then like a red dot on the side and you, if you want to use both. So that also exists in the game. Although, I mean, I guess the utility of that is limited when you can swap out your ACOG for a red dot. Having a hybrid sight, especially with right now in the beta, it's weird because when I remap my crouch controls to the right stick, um, the, it's the melee button that switches your optic. Um, when I switch that control, uh, when I'm down, looking down a hybrid sight, if I change from the red dot to the ACOG, my person stand, stands up or crouches, it changes my, my posture. So that's, hope, I'm sure they'll fix that in the full game, but um, you know, it just, I, it's really, it's really cool. I love that as an addition. The, what don't I like about it? Currently, and I had to kind of scratch my head and think a while about this, what do I not like about it? From what I can tell right now, because you can switch out ammo types, they seem to give you less ammo out of the gate. It feels, I think you only have like two or maybe three magazines starting out. Um, I don't know. I feel like in other Battlefield games, you start out with a significant amount of ammo that you can fight for a while. I feel like in this game, after two or three engagements, with especially with like an automatic rifle, you're just gonna be out of ammo. And honestly, switching to alternate ammo types isn't really a solution. If you're engaging at mostly medium range with an assault rifle, switching to the close range ammo isn't really gonna help you. You're gonna have to change your whole play style to adapt to your ammo instead of the other way around. So I f have found myself almost exclusively running the ammo box in the beta, which feels a bit limiting, especially since there's a lot of vehicles, like air vehicles, I'd like to ride in the AA more, but I don't run that just because they don't really work. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't really take a vehicle down the with the AA rockets. I mean, as an infantry player, if you want air vehicles to go down right now, other vehicles have to do the work for the most part. So so right now, at least the way that I've played, and I've played with all the little gadgets, um, at least somewhat, and, and right now ammo box is just what I do. And it's not even always for ammo. I also take it because I like it replenishing my uh, motion sensors. Uh, which I have been using a ton of. So um, that's the only thing I really don't like about it is right now it seems to have caused an ammo shortage. And because of the role-based system being shaken up, you don't really, and the at least in the beta, there's no ability to request ammo. Um, you, there's no like radial menu for sending out a, hey, someone give me ammo if anyone has ammo. It doesn't really work that way anymore. So if you don't take ammo yourself, when you run out of ammo, you can pick up like half a magazine off of someone that you kill. But beyond that, I mean, you, you just provide it for yourself or you're just fucked. You like switch to a different gun or try and scra scavenge. Uh, that's the only thing that I, that I don't even know if it's specifically related to the plus system. But that's the only thing that, that's kind of like uh, right now. So what is still unknown? Because we're in the beta, right? What is still unknown about the plus system? And I don't know if this has been answered elsewhere. So maybe if it has, you guys can direct me and help me answer these questions. But Will this limit how many attachments a weapon has? In previous Battlefield games, there are a ton of attachments for weapons, especially modern weapons, right? You get like six, eight optics choices. I'm not seeing in the plus system that you're gonna have like the top plus menu going up like nine choices and you know, like the barrels, like seven choices. It appears that the sweet spot is gonna be three, maximum of three attachments per leg of the, of the plus which I think is great. So the question is, does that mean that each weapon is only gonna have, you know, 12 attachments? Or is there gonna be some way for each weapon to customize its plus system so that you can select which attachments you want to take with you? Like for my sniper rifle, I want a long range scope, I want an ACOG mid-range scope, and I want like a red dot. And those are the only options that I want. I want a long range barrel, I want a short range barrel, like, I'm hoping that's what it is. I hope there's a bunch of attachments to choose from and you get to pick which ones suit your playstyle so that you can basically carry around 
I would say three builds, but in reality, because of you know the factorial way that it works and the permutations, like it would be more than that potentially. But the way that I think of it, kind of simply, is I would have three different core builds that I would support, and I could swap between those. So I don't know how, if that's how that's going to work. Do you, you guys heard that from anywhere? Let me know. Um, and then the other thing. Is, I guess that was both of them. I have, will it limit the attachments that you have? And how do you choose what goes in the plus menu? Um, there may be balance concerns as well, but from what I've seen, that, that doesn't seem to be the case because it doesn't fundamentally change the weapon to make it like super powerful or this, that, or the other. So overall, I love it. It's a great addition. I feel like it adds a lot to the game. Um, if you guys have played with it or seen it or whatever, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think like, ah, oh, the realism is too, too realism breaking? Like, ah, oh, it, it, pulls me out of that's okay like if it's like the immersion feeling like you're in the game does it kind of break that for you or do you think that it's a great idea tell me what you guys think those are just my thoughts i'm super super excited for the full release of battlefield 2042 um as i'm recording this uh, man i had to pull myself away to make this video because i just want to jump back in and play more battlefield while the beta is still running because it ends tomorrow um so yeah i like this video if you liked my rambling about the plus system uh dislike it if you if you don't like this kind of video it's all right uh subscribe if you're not already subscribed because i want you all to be my minions and i'll see you guys in the next one an objective is under attack